Okay, math, anytime, anywhere. Welcome from peace, parent engagement for active child enrichment. Our learning focus today will be on these objectives. Why parent involvement in math is important. Why is your involvement critical to your child's learning? The parent-child activities for success with math. And we will learn some simple activities that you can incorporate into your day. Then cultivating your child's skills in math. Anywhere, anytime. And you can be aware of enhancing what your child already knows. And then connecting with your child through math, play games. And you will become aware that playing games teaches and reinforces math skills. Math. Here are some things I want you to keep in mind. Math. Math helps build the brain. First of all, we need to think of math as something that surrounds us everywhere. And parents that show an interest and love for math convey that interest to their child. Think of math as something that is fun and never ever convey negative ideas to your child about math. Um, for example, I've heard a parent say, I was never good at math, or I never liked math. Instead, view math as something exciting and fun, and your child will pick up on that and get excited too, because the benefits of having good math skills have an impact on the areas of the brain that control motor skills, behavior, language, visual memory, and even emotion. Math helps build executive function. And that's necessary to focus our attention to make decisions and to remember instructions. And this is called working memory. And every time a child applies math skills, these neurons in the brain are fired up. Today, we hear a lot about STEM, S-T-E-M. STEM is a curricul curriculum based on developing and integrating science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Math is the foundation for all STEM-related activities. Now, math helps us with making predictions. Research suggests that these early math skills, such as making predictions, are a good indi indicator of academic success later on. Math strengthens critical thinking. And it's important to teach critical thinking skills we use critical thinking skills every day to help us make good decisions, to understand the consequences of our actions and to solve problems. Math knowledge plays a crucial role in understanding the contents of other school subjects, such as science, social studies, and even music and art. 
math skills carry over to other life skills so that children can function successfully and be independent. You can pursue math anytime and anywhere. You can pursue math while you're walking, while you're riding in the car, at the restaurant or at a grocery store or at your home. While you're walking, you can do something as simple as counting the trees and counting the things that are outdoors. Also, you can practice addition and subtraction by playing games. Having children form pictures in their mind is a great exercise for the brain. For example, while you look at a tree, you can play this visualization game. Have your child form a picture in his or her mind of birds, birds flying to the tree. Now, picture five birds flying to the tree. Next, three birds join the five birds in the tree. Now, how many birds are there? And let them make the problem. Five birds plus three birds equal eight birds. And then next, when you're playing the game with your child, let him or her make up a problem for you to picture in your head. For example, <clears throat> he or she may say, mm, six squirrels climb the tree. Then two more squirrels join them. How many squirrels are there now? And then you make the problem. Six plus two equals eight. You can also play subtraction games while you're there. Picture six birds in a tree. Two of them fly away. Now, how many birds are left? Now, make the problem. Six take away two equals four. Then let them take turns to set up a subtraction problem for you to solve. Then go back and forth and enjoy the games. And you can make the games more challenging by increasing numbers and encourage children to solve problems in their head. Some of them need to, some children like to count on their fingers. <clears throat> Excuse me, and this is okay. But try to encourage them to think and make the pictures and the visualization and say it instead. And also multiplication. Picture three birds in a tree. What if there were two times that many birds in the tree? Now, how many would that be? And then let them make up a multiplication problem for you to solve and practice those skills. Games like these are important. And they're important because of the parent-child interaction. It shows that both of you are having fun and you're learning at the same time. Now, while you're riding in the car, you could count all the black cars, count all the white cars. Now, count the trucks. Look at the speed limit signs. Pose this question. Is the speed limit higher or is it lower in heavily traveled areas and why? You can also make predictions about how many minutes it will take to get home or 
how many minutes it will take to get to the store. And then compare the actual time that it will take. Now, if you're at a restaurant or you're at the grocery store, you can there's, look at the items on a menu or look at the items in the grocery aisle. See which items are more or which ones cost less, which are less expensive. You could even compare the cost of apples. Then, while you're at home, there are lots of opportunities to practice measurement. Have some measuring cups handy and have them pour one half cup of water or one fourth cup of water. See how that looks and experiment with cups pints and gallon containers. Which is more, a half cup of water or a fourth cup of water? And let them make those visual comparisons. Also, cooking activities are always good. It's a good way to learn math skills. Some simple ideas or chocolate chip peanut butter cookies, peanut butter and banana sandwiches, marshmallow fruit dip, and a no-bake trail mix. Then <clears throat> let them measure things in the house using a measuring tape or a yardstick. And let them make predictions about how long and wide things are. He might say, hey, how wide do you think our refrigerator is? Then let them measure it and see how close they were to the correct measurement. Also, you could use your bathroom scale. They could weigh things on a bathroom scale. How much do you think your backpack weighs with books in it? or let them stand on that scale with their backpack on and then again with their backpack off and let them see what the difference is. Also, you can practice telling time at home. Compare your digital, digital clock and your analog clocks. Ask them which one they prefer and why. And how is an analog clock different from a digital clock? And how are they the same? And you can make a paper plate clock. Draw the numbers on the paper plate and use a brad fastener to assemble the hands. Let them practice moving the hands to make certain times. Encourage positive thinking about math. And I'm here to tell you that math is magical. Why? Why is it magical? Because it helps us to know things. You can brainstorm with your child about how many ways math can help us. And here are some of the examples that you and your child might come up with in a brainstorm. It tells us how fast we're going in the car. It tell, makes prediction about the number of M&Ms in a bag. It helps us figure out the cost of items when we are at the store or a restaurant. 
math helps us figure out which store offers items at a lower cost. It helps us tell time, helps us count the number of people ahead of us in a, in a line. And you know what? Math helps us to get a good job. When we develop good math skills, we can, we can choose exciting professions. Our professions that we would like to have. And I'm sure that you can come up with so many more ways that math can help us. Then another activity you can do, if you look at this graphic art organizer with a circle in the middle, you could choose a number and put in the middle of that circle and brainstorm with your child. Maybe the number could be 10. How many ways can 10 be represented? It can be represented by the word 10, to yeah. It can be represented by five plus five, six plus four, or even tallies of 10, five and five tallies. There are so many more ways that they can come up with to represent the number 10. Here are samples of math activities and tips for your five and six year olds. One, you can, or younger children, than five and six years old, if you have any younger children, they can do these. Count the steps to the store or some other designation. Ask them. How many steps do you think it will take us to get there? What if we take longer steps? Do you think we will get there faster? And if we take longer steps, will we have to take fewer steps or more steps? You could also help have them predict how many days until an important event occurs, like your birthday? How many days will it be until your birthday? And you can use a calendar and let them count the number of days until they have a birthday or, or another event. Also, if you have younger children, they always benefit from movement. Incorporate movement into your games. Have them jump 20 times, jump 10 times. Which was more, which was less? Bounce the ball. One time, two times, and now three or four times. Next. Build the ability to recognize, identify, and create patterns. You can play the what comes next pattern game. For this, you could use colored blocks like, and make a pattern like red, red, blue, red, red, blue, red, red, and then let them finish out the pattern. Some other materials that you could use in this game are stickers, colored cereal, M&Ms, coins, shoes and socks. Then you make a pattern and let them discover what's wrong in your pattern. You can deliberately make a mistake, such as red, <clears throat> red, red, blue, Red, red, blue, red, red, red. What's wrong with that pattern? And let them correct that. Also remember, it is good for the brain to use visualizations. 
let them make a pattern in their head. Could be apples, apples, banana. Apples, apples, bananas. Apple, apple, banana. And let them picture those patterns in their mind. Another activity is that you can walk around your house <clears throat> and find things that are big, small, short, tall, long. You will be surprised at how many things you will find around your house. And remember, there are so many ways, opportunities to practice addition and subtraction. Thin white paper plates can be used for a lot of things. Lay out three plates and you might have them put two spoons in one plate and four spoons in the next plate. Then have them put the spoons together in the third plate and tell you how many things all together make the problem. Two plus four equals six. Then you can use the paper plates to create a subtraction problems too. Place six atoms on a plate, take three away and increase those numbers for challenge. Then you can put two atoms on a plate. You can put more atoms on the next plate. Which is more and which is less? And then let them practice putting more and less objects on plates. And let them arrange them and tell you. Also, sorting is a good math skill. We use sorting for all kinds of things. We can sort items by shape and size. You could cut pre-cut shapes and have them sort out the shapes like triangles here. Rectangles here, circles, and squares. Also, put all the big balls together, put all the middle sized balls together, and put all the little balls together. That's a fun activity. You can let them help you sort the laundry. That is another good sorting activity. Here are some activities for your six to eight year olds. So many games can be played with dice and dice or dominoes. Play a guessing game using dice. You take two dice and your child takes two dice. The first player tosses the dice to reveal the total number of dice. And then each person guesses which will be more, the first person's total or the second person's total. Then the second person tosses and, and reveals their total number. And then it's determined whose guess was correct. You can do this several times and then tally the number that each person guessed correctly. Then a simple game for multiplication with the dice. Place three dice down, three dice face up, and ask them what 
multiplication problem. Could that be? And it would be three times three is nine. And then let him or her set up another multiplication problem with the dice and practice them. A simple game with dominoes is called concentration. Place all the dominoes face down and put them in rows. And the players have to take turns picking up two dominoes. If the dominoes add up to 12, the player takes the set and keeps it. And if it doesn't, he puts the two dominoes back in the place where he found them. And then the next player takes the turn. The number with the most sets is the winner. Here is another activity to get your child to think. We'll say Dale has 12 cookies. She has to share it equally with her three sisters. So how many cookies will she get? This is really the first step to division. Then measure it. Get your child to measure the length and width of a book, of a desk, of a box, and have him or her help you measure a cup of flour for baking or a half a cup of nuts. Then time. To practice time, figure how much time is left to complete a task. Say, how much time will it take you to pick up your toys? How much time will it take you to run around the house? How much time would it take you to put on your shoes and your socks? And you can set a timer for this. And let's then see how close their prediction came to the actual time. And remember, when you are actively engaged with your child, with the activities like these, they learn so much more. It doesn't have to be a lot of time. It can be five or 10 minutes. Remember, it's not how long you interact and engage with your child but it's the quality of time of that engagement. Now, here are some activities for your eight to 10 year olds. Stimulate cognitive problem solving skills. And you can pose the question, how many ways can you make a dollar, a quarter, or a dime? And get your child to figure it out in his or her head. But if it proves too challenging, you can give them the coins, quarter, dime, pennies, and nickels, and see if they can come up with the answer that way. Either way is okay. Then again, using those white simple paper plates, you can practice fractions. Fold the paper plate in half, fold it in fours, in six, and let them get the hands on experience of fractions. Now, here's some more activities for eight and 10 year olds. Yeah. You can ask them, which is a better buy? Four apples for 
for a bag of apples for eight fifty, and ask them why. Why did you say a bag of ten apples would be the better buy? And have a discussion about that. Or which is the better buy? Take. 10% off of your purchase of $20? Or take $20 off of your purchase of $20? Which is the better buy? Remember, percentage is an important concept that students will use regularly in their daily lives. And if they're having a little difficulty understanding Percentage, you can explain that percentage is a part of the whole 100%. You get 100% if you answer all the questions correctly on the test. But if you miss half the questions, you just get 50%. Huh? And you can even use a 100 chart template or make a square of 10 rows and 10 columns and let them color two rows for 20%, and one row for 10% to get, let them get the idea of the visual for a percentage and it will help them to understand it a little bit better. And here are some key takeaways. Build persistence and growth mindset. Encourage them to problem solve and let them know that you are proud when they solve a problem on their own. And make math a part of your routine. Engaging in math, everyday math activities. Relate math to something that they enjoy doing. For example, my 11-year-old grandson is, is very, very much into baseball. And there, they were studying areas and shape at the time. He found out that a baseball diamond <clears throat> is the perfect rhombus. It has a diamond, a diamond shape with equal sides. This concept stuck with him because he related it to something that he enjoyed. Math. Rich math experiences. Remember, it helps us build the brain. It keeps those neurons fired up. Encourage love for math. And show your own interest in it. Engage in math. Anytime, anywhere. You have a few minutes with your child. And you can do hands-on math activities. Remember, it's the quality of time that you spend with your child in these activities not how long you spend. So just if you have a little time every day, whatever you have some time, engage in the activities. Make it a part of your everyday routine. And get your children to problem solve and make predictions for the math skills. 
Involve your children in simple counting, to fractions, to money, to measurement, and more. And, and remember, make math playful and make it fun. And I hope you get the idea that you don't have to sit down with your child and do a worksheet. Pencil and paper activity. There are so many more ways to get them to practice those math skills and to make it fun. Miss Redfern? Yes. I sent yes. you a message, not sure you got it. We just have about um, two minutes left. Have what? We just have two minutes, again? two minutes left. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did send you a message earlier. Sorry, I'm not sure you got it. Okay, I just wanna give them some online resources. One is Khan Academy. Another is KumathForKids.com. And there's online games for PBS for kids and thinkfun.com is another one. And all of these are good resources online if you wanna go online and get your math this way. Thank you from peace. <laughs>